I'm Glenn Gramer from Hegwish Baptist Church. This is my second time here. This is a little bit bigger crowd than like a month and a half ago. And there was like four people on a Thursday night. So it's a little bit bigger. I don't have the, the laptop to hide behind, you know. And um, but I just want to say that um uh, that time I preached about something called it's a spirit of foolishness. And it was just something that the Lord was just showing me in my life that I needed to get rid of. Because it was hindering me to walk on that path that he has. You know, the Bible says that a fool returns to his folly. And sometimes we wonder why we keep winding up in the same place. Why, you know, we're not the same. We're better, but we keep winding up in the same place. And and so I started searching in Proverbs. And I started searching. And, you know, I don't want to just, I just don't want to read it. Proverbs is pretty, okay? It's pretty. The Bible's awesome. But why not just take it in and let it change your lives? And that's what the Lord was saying. You know what? Let it change your life. So I started going in that. And, I, you know, I preached, I think it, um, on that Thursday, it's like 36 minutes. So today I have 45 minutes, maybe a little less. But um, let me get my phone. I'll time myself. But uh, I just think that, uh, you know, the Lord is, just, he, he wants us to have, he, he wants us to not go down certain ways. He wants us to have, I mean, as a father, as a father, you know, a father looks out for their children. He he is more intimately in our lives than we would ever know. You know, maybe some of us had bad fathers. I had a I had a pretty good father. I hope I'm a better father than he was. And some of us had didn't even have fathers, but he will be a father to, to the one that doesn't have a father, to the fatherless. But he is such a good father, and he's so intimately in our lives. And so whatever he does, it's just to nudge us on that path. And he, and he sees, he sees the outcome of everywhere we go, everywhere we go. And so today's sermon is something that I wasn't able to get in that 36 minute slot when I stretched out the 39. Today's 45, it's less now, but it's something that I just could not just talk about for flippantly for three minutes. Okay. And it's about the correction of the Lord, the discipline of the Lord, but it's not like, you know, the sermons that you that we're used to in church where you can beat you down and you know, like you're no good and stuff like that. Okay. That's not where this is coming from. Cause he's not like that. All right. See that. I think that through the ages, through the ages, a lot of stuff has infiltrated the churches, the way we look at God. Okay. The, um, I don't know how many hundreds of years, the Roman Catholic church has even though we're, we're not has infiltrated our thoughts of God. And we're so used to looking and saying that God is just going to, he's going to do this. And this. But he, he, out of a gentle father, he tries to guide us on that path. And, and, and you know, so his rod and his staff, right? Just doink, you know, keep away the wolves, keep away the things that would try to hurt the people, but also to get it, you know? And um, so when I was preparing this, this is uh, the sermon I did preach was the spirit of foolishness. This is called the spirit of God versus the spirit of foolishness. It's God's attitude towards that. And so I was thinking, I'm like, okay, I'm going to preach for 36 minutes. And I'm okay. I'm preaching on 36 minutes to church head, which about this point. Yeah. No. I said, no way, God, no way. Because I'm not, I'm not going out that way. I'm not, I, this is not my job to preach to discipline to yeah. you guys. That's the pastor. That's the pastor. He's the shepherd. And, you know, I see guys come up here like Brian and Phil and the guy from Connecticut, Gerald. <laughs> but I, I see him come up here and I, and I look and I'm like, you know what? I know that they think the same way as I do, that we don't even look at ourselves like uh, sheepdogs. Just go barking around and yapping and trying to get the, you know, the flock together. And so I really, really look at myself this and um, Brian sent something and Brian's funny. Okay. He's funny. And he sent some little thing and it's a little video short. I think it was you, but, and it was of these, these guys, there was this big sheep. I think it was a sheep caught in a trench. All right. And there's trenches all around. And on the, on the side of the sheep, there's on the side of that trench, and, and the sheep goes for like maybe a mile or not the sheep, but the uh, trench goes for a mile. And so on the side of that, trench there is level ground level ground but it's a sheep and so they're working and they're getting that thing out it's only a couple seconds and they finally got that thing out and okay and that thing 
just because it's a sheep, because sheep are not that smart. They're, they And they can't really see that far ahead. They're kind of blind, all right? And, and this one looked like a, well, whatever. It just, it was a sheep. But then as soon as it got out of that trench, it just started running. It started running out of fear and just running. And you know, this, this race, okay, it's a race, but it's a marathon. It's a walk. We can't, we're not going to get far ahead. We're just going to go, you know, it's a, it's a walk with the Lord. Okay. Step one and then step two and then step three. So we don't have to get all anxious about that. But so the sheep got out of that trench and, and these guys, I don't know how long were they working. And all of a sudden, 10 feet later, back in the same you're like, and I'm looking at the end of the field. I'm like, this is going to take more than a couple. This is going to be an all day thing. And that's what I think that I am. And we are just big, dumb sheep that really can't see that far. I, I really don't. I really don't. And I need the Savior to, to guide me. Okay. And I need to decide. To get, and, and sheep are, I mean, they're really dumb. Okay. And this one looked kind of smelly. So maybe I'm kind of smelly too. I don't know, but I just really think that this is, see, people want to get up here and nobody, nobody, and they want to get up here and they just want to get it. And you know what? That's not a part of being, a, that's not, that, that's not God. That's not God. And, and so I just want to get you, know, I'm not trying to change anybody's minds about anything, but um, I just want you guys just to realize that God is more in our lives than we could ever, ever know. You're, it's not by accident you're here. Okay, it's not by accident you're here. And, and that's a loving God. That's a loving God. And and I know he laughs at us sometimes. I know. I'd laugh. I'd laugh at all. But so I didn't want to just preach on on discipline the wrong way, the wrong, the way that we all expect it, you know. Um and so, you know, I I started just thinking about it and thinking about it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to ask the Lord, okay, because because it says, no, God is a spirit, right? He's a spirit. And it says, believe not every spirit, okay, and, and test the spirits whether of God. So some of these things, I, I you know, I don't say, God, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why is this happening to me? But I'll ask him, God, are you behind this? Are you behind this? And I, I realized that I wasn't, that I was just trying to relate something to you guys that the Lord was showing me for myself. So, you know, I'm not interested in here, you know, like those people that just light themselves on fire. I'm not, this is not going to be the sermon where I'm going to do that. But all right. So I want to just go over something that I, I started before a little bit, just because I got to connect. The sermon is connected. But if you go in, you don't even have to go there. If I can find it. It's in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 4, 22. God just says that his, his people are, 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 are sadish people. And they're foolish. They're foolish. And and, and sadish means stupid. And it, and and then believe me, if I know about being foolish and stupid, it's because I look at myself a lot more. I wish I wish I knew people. You know, I don't really know a lot of people here as good as I would like. I, I think Bill's the only one that I really know a little better. But I'm not going to preach about him because that's not going to happen. So I got to preach about myself. And I don't know how many sermons I can get out of that. But the fact is, you know, and when you go through Proverbs and, and you just, you just, God, just, you know what, just, just let me just let your word grow in my life and let me just take that. And so God calls his children foolish. And then right now we're in a time where same as when Christ was on the earth, where, where the Lord said, what do I like in this generation? And I'm going to, you can go there to Matthew 11. 16 through 19. I'll, I'll read it. You can write it down. He says, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you and you have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a devil. And the son of man came eating and drinking and they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. And the thing is, same back then, now, the body of Christ is busy playing games, okay? They're playing games. And as a, as a father, you know, all I want out of my kids 
is maturity. That's all I want. That's all I want. And that's all he wants out of his kids. If you're two years old, you act like you're two. If you're five years old, you act like you're five, you know, and sometimes kids, you know, and that's funny, but, but he wants, that's all he's looking for is maturity just to grow up. And, and when he looked, and I believe right now in the body of Christ, there's not a lot of maturity because we won't be doing the stupid things, the foolish things that they're doing. All right. Um, now I remember when I was uh, growing up now, my mom's here today. Okay, so I can't look at her that much because I don't want to start crying. But my mom raised five boys, right? Five boys. So people, you know, I'll say I, I'm more familiar with the discipline of the Lord in my life than I am with the uh, the backlash of the enemy. Okay, because uh, I'm not I'm not a uh, I'm not a, a great demon hunter warrior yet. I don't have the, my card yet. But but the fact is. And I'm more I'm more familiar with the discipline of the Lord until maybe the last five, six weeks after a sermon. I remember uh, preaching that sermon and that was on a Thursday and I come here on a Sunday and I was talking to Kenny and I'm like, dude, did I do something wrong? And he's like, what? I go, I didn't get any backlash. And that's not a pride thing. I didn't get anything. Dude, nothing. What did I what did I do wrong? And he said, well, praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Until two weeks later. <laughs> and then everything just happen and now so I'm, I'm i'm i just want to say that when if i go back to my family when i was growing up five brothers okay i was saved when i was six years old in 1969 so i think my brother was born in 57 the oldest so he was like 12 years old so he had more rebellion he had a little bit more in him and so we we play you know he played he well he was how old he was he was with his friends well, me and my younger brother, we would play army down the street, you know, machine guns and all stuff. What is there? Right. But we had a thing and it was a chime system and a speaker. Now, if I'm playing, if I'm playing basketball in the driveway and my mom or dad said, it's time to come home or time for supper, time to eat. I drop everything I would do. Okay? I drop it. But um, there's also a chime system on that thing. And um, you can hear it through the neighborhood. I don't know what the neighbors complained, you know, but you can hear it. And so if you're a couple blocks down, you can hear it, maybe faintly. But I don't remember it because I was never out that late. You know, I was always home for supper before. But uh, my mom said that my brother got in a lot of trouble because he didn't obey the time. And, and the thing is, God, I think he's saying something. And I think it's time for a lot of people to stop playing the game. And, I, and I'm saying this not to you guys. I'm just saying it. God told me to stop being foolish. Stop playing games in your life, you know. And, and um, and, and and as a father, you can see that I think it's time for the the overall church that it's going to be something's going. I don't know. It's not. It's not prophetic. It's just common sense. As a father, you see when you tell your kids to stop playing, and they refuse to play, they refuse to stop playing. That something is going to happen, okay? And 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 the hand of God—that's all I can say. And and I'm familiar with that, okay? I'm familiar with that. I was a middle kid, but all right. So I just want to—I just want to tell you guys. So I'm a big dumb sheep, half line like everyone else. We're all just—we're all in this together. And so, so it, the thing is, I. Uh, it's not my job to preach discipline to the church. It's not my job. I don't want it. Okay. But it also, I don't see it. I don't see things that God is trying to, you know, correct, you know, and stuff like that. Because, you know, David said this, he said, my sin is ever before me. And, you know, the word of God says that first you take the beam out of your own eye so you can see clearly to, to take the thing out of their eyes. Well, okay. My foolishness is ever before me. I can't see past that. I literally can't. I, I have studied Proverbs and I've seen all my lack, all of it. And, you know, and it's, and it's taken years to get here and I, I can't see it, but I'm glad. I'm glad because you know what? I just have to trust in the Lord. And, and so again, my foolishness is ever before me. And until God, you know, clears that out, I'm really not, <laughs> I'm just trying to preach something that the Lord showed me for myself. All right. So all right. So I, you know, I'm, so I've been going through Proverbs and Proverbs is awesome. I mean, if you want to get your walk right, you want to get it right. There's time for doctrine. 
doctrine is is the basis of everything, but there's there's also a time for obedience. And I've gone through Proverbs and I listen to it. I, you know, I can't read the Bible when I'm going to work because I never get to work. But I'll, I'll put on something and just go through Proverbs. And um, there's some scriptures that just, uh, you know, I, I can't say I like the scriptures, but I love them. Some are, you know, when Jesus spoke, some things are just so hard, right? But but I, I okay, I'll, I'll just go over something right here. And, but in the beginning of Proverbs, see the whole, the whole book is about the path of wisdom and the path of foolishness. And, and, but right in the beginning, God talks about this and, and I'm not going to use all the verses before it, but it says this in Proverbs 1 20 through, it says, and I've seen this many times and, and, and I'm saying, Lord, you know what? That's a good verse. I don't know who that's for. Right. And then finally it's like, okay, maybe, maybe you're telling me and, and literally, you know what? It's hard to fight the Lord. Okay. And it, and it says this in Proverbs 1 23, it says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. And 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 the thing is, that's that's top. And there's other verses that surround it. And I, you know, I'm just like I said. I I the verses before I really don't like, but I love. Okay, because they're hard. They're hard. But um, and I was trying to blame it for someone else. You know, and say that's for that's for that's for the heathens. Or, but no, it's really for us. And um. All right, so let's just go. I'm just gonna. Oh, good. I got. Let's. If you want to turn to uh, Proverbs three, eleven through thirteen. Get to that first. And I just want to familiarize us with how again how the Lord is in our lives and how he and he corrects and corrections. It's just not discipline, but correction is the word of God. All right. All I know is for myself, when my dad would tell me something, right? Tell me something that I, and I said, yeah, okay. And I didn't do it. Well, you know, it, it would happen. I, I'd feel it. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not the only, but I would feel it. But um, I was a pretty obedient kid, but I'm not going to ask my mom to verify that since she's here. All right. But I, 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 guys, this is love. This is this plea. This is something that the Lord is showing for me, and you can glean out of it. But so many times we just, you know, God is awesome and powerful, but He's a loving Father. He and He he's so, He so wants the best for us. He so wants the best for us, and you know what? Sometimes I can't see two feet in front of me. I got pretty good eyes, but I'm talking spiritually. I can't, and so I have to rely. I can't rely on the stuff that kept me out of here for 30 years. I can't rely on it. And finally God got me back. And so I'm, you know, I'm just relying on your word. I can't, I can't get all ticked off or mad about stuff like that. Cause that's the same stuff that even though I wasn't ticked off, it kept me from here, you know? And so people let that same spirit that, that got them into the bondage that they were in, get them out of here. Right. That's all it is. And, and, and why trust in yourself? I trust in the word of God. And God is so good that he, if you ask him, he will keep you here. He will keep you here. So where am I at? Proverbs 3.11. Okay. 3.11 through 13. Now I got good eyes, but you know, the light stinks here, but that's all right. <laughs> um, 11.13. It says, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither, neither be wary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it, I'll go a little further, is better than a merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. And it goes on. Okay, so that's that's good. And you could read on. You could read on. But the, the fact is, you know, I used to I used to be afraid of loss of salvation, you know. And some of the guys here, their their helmet of salvation gets dented, but it never is taken off. It's never knocked off. And you know, I've always since like when I came here when I was eighteen. I'm an old man now, it's sixty. But when I was there, I I, I the, the light of the salvation of God and the grace of God came into my life. And um, I always believed that. But you just it just hits you. How can I be saved when I'm this 
crappy inside me. <laughs> can I say that? I already did. But the fact is, how can I do that? Well, it's not me. It's him. It's all him. It's all him. And But I would use that because I'm familiar more with the discipline of Lord. I would say, well, you know what? Yeah, I, know, I, I don't feel like I'm saved, but I know that God is disciplining me. I'm getting a whipping right now. I know it. So he loves me. He doesn't whip and he doesn't discipline those that are not his kids, right? Right? So that's plan B, right? Plan B is I'm getting a whipping right now. I already know that he loves me. And then I get back to, you know, the salvation and the grace of God. But so I was reading, going through Proverbs and believe me, I didn't come out with the idea. Okay, I didn't come out with the idea. Well, this is going to, you know, uh, God hates foolishness. We know he hates pride. We know he hates pride. Per devil, when he said, I will be like this. But once the devil decided to walk in it, it was foolishness. It was foolish to think that we that we can do anything better than what God has for us. All right. And so that's and that's and the foolishness is something that God talks about. And so I, I'm just going to it's going to be like a, a little growing thing here because, you know, I didn't get it all at one time. It just, you know, you read this verse and I'm like, hmm, God really doesn't like it. OK. And um, and this is God's attitude towards foolish and as a father, you know, he he will deal with it. He will deal with it. Um, it's Proverbs seven twenty two. And I, you know what? I'm going to go quick, but I just want to give you an idea of it. Uh, seven twenty two says he goeth after. It was talking about someone going into sexual sin or whatever, and he says he goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stack. So right there, God is connecting foolishness with correction. All right, and that and that's but it gets even deeper than that in Proverbs 17 10. Proverbs 17 10. Um a reproof enter more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. So God is again associating. I mean, he doesn't like it, right? I'm I'm just saying it's in his word. He does not like it. He doesn't like it when I act foolish. I'm not talking about joking around, but I do joke around, but foolish and thinking. Yeah, you know what, God, I don't have, you know, not even consciously. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not ready to do that, you know. And he knows the out, he knows the big, he knows what the end result is, and so he will correct that. All right, um, Proverbs nineteen twenty nine. Nineteen twenty nine. I think I'm gonna, even though I got good eyes, I think I'm gonna have to put a, like a little light up here sometimes. Not today. so it says judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. Oh, well, it's getting to me, it was just getting intense. I was just like, Well, wait a minute, God, you really we and we know he doesn't like foolishness. We don't we know he doesn't. Okay, he he wants us to, to be mature, he wants us to he wants the body of Christ to grow up, you know. And and, and we know we know what's right, and we're 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 this is this is the safest place to be. This is the safest place to be. I, I praise the Lord. Maybe I'm glad I had to go through 30 years in the wilderness and finally see what God is doing here and not take it for granted and, and do whatever I have to to make sure that whatever's here, that I support it and, and that I do whatever I can to lift it up, okay? Because it's not real. I was out there, you know, it was a time where for five years, I didn't even read the Bible, okay? And then... And there was one year, no, well, five years I didn't go to a church. And then one year I didn't even read the Bible. And I went to this church, and, you know, the churches are churches, but you, God was there only because his people were there, okay? His spirit was in there. And I just remember coming to tears. And that was the, the way back that the Lord was bringing me back to him. And that's all, you know, that's that's this awesome stuff. But okay, where am I at? Uh, 20, I think I'm at 26.3. 26.3. Okay. Oh, okay, again, God's attitude towards foolishness. And this would be our attitude towards it. We, you know, I'd rather self-correct. I'd rather humble myself than God humble me. That's, I mean, it's, believe me, I'd rather, I'd rather just do that. But uh, this is a whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. So it's, it's saying that God is against that, right? And then in 27, 22, I think that's 27. Yeah. Another one says, 
Though thou shouldst bray a fool and more amongst wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. And we know that, you know, people that commit crimes or whatever and they go to jail, you know, usually they repeat them again, right? Because you, you can't by the law or by just punishing them like that, you can't get it out. The only way you can really get it out is, is through, the, through deliverance and through God hand in their lives. You know, they may be able to be able to push some of that urges away, but it's still in there. So you can't, it's that foolishness or that stuff is still in there. All right. The well, time is going by. But all right. So I just saw, uh, I want to tell you a story about my dad. Okay. And I, and, and there's some things my, I used to, um, my dad used to come here. We used to sit in the second pew there. So Brian, I want my pew back one day. All right. But I remember my dad, okay, in his 60s. So he was he was a he was a tough guy, but he's a good guy. But that's the time I was saved in 1969. And we went to a small Baptist church. And, and I'm telling you, that's when they were really into correcting your kids. And you know, and it saved me from a lot, but uh, and also I got a lot. And my dad was a good guy. And you know, people have ruined uh correction and discipline because they've gone overboard either one way or the other, whereas they, they, it's not out of love. Okay. And they're not trying to help their kids. They just want to get their kids to the side. You know what? Just get your, do, do this. Don't get in my way. But um, I remember my dad can, and um, I'm familiar with, again, I'm more familiar with the correction of my father, my dad. Okay. than I am, but I, I'll get there. But um, I remember my dad one time and I actually remember I was, I was probably like nine, 10 years old. And I remember, uh, his room. It's, it's it's imprinted in my my brain. I can I can I can piece it together now. And I don't remember what I did. Probably picking on my younger brother, but I remember him um being called in there, and and I don't remember what he said, but I remember him just saying, "Okay, lay over to bed." I'm like, oh, here it comes. and I remember the, the color of the cover on the bed. I remember all of it, everything. I remember his his wood desk right there. I remember his little stereo right there on the side with the record player on her. And I just remember leaning over to bed and all of a sudden that skinny bell came off. And believe me, I didn't get bruises or welts, but I felt the fire. Okay. I felt the fire. I remember that. And all of a sudden I'm just laying there and he's just whipping me. And then I'm like, wait, what? Oh, that hurts. And I put my hands back there to try to stop. Just put on my dad. Okay. Well, maybe I shouldn't have done what I did before, right? But I just try to stop it. And then I'm like, well, dad, ow, ow, ow. He goes, what? I go, stop hitting my hands. And he's like, well, get your hands out of the way. And then, but I remember, I remember turning back, looking back, and I, I just saw his face. And I saw him like, like that. It just, and I'm like, and nine years old, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, that ain't right. You know, that something wrong with that he's getting too much joy out of this all right and and literally so i was the middle kid i was pretty i was all right but i tried to be stealth but not that time but uh all right so let's just go all right we're gonna go to hebrews 12 now i'll just say this guys all these guys that are preaching and sometimes they're they're borrowing you know the scriptures from one another when I was talking to Brian the other day, and I'm like, well, I was going to use Hebrews 12. But the thing is, in the overall thing, I think that God is just trying to say something, right? I'm not smart enough to come up with anything by myself. And then all these other guys, they started it, and I write something that is an agreement. But it, but it is. It's in, let's get to Hebrews 12, 5 through 13. Let me get there. I should have. Old Testament, right? No, it's okay. New Testament. There's 12, 5 through 13. All right. And I'm just going to read it fast. Okay. And, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you, with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? 
But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, you know, for their own good, okay? But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down in the feeble knees. Okay, and this is where Proverbs comes in. He associate the discipline of the Lord with, with in Proverbs. It says, it says oh, where am I at? Uh, wherefore, lift up the hands and make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned in the way, but let it rather be healed. And, and the thing is, the thing is, in order, God wants us to get on that, walk on that, that path of wisdom. Because we're we're just sheep. We're just sheep. That if, if we could have lived a life that was that was awesome, we wouldn't be here. All right. Or we 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 wouldn't need the Lord. But we need the Lord. We need the Lord. And 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 so and okay. And and so, but the thing is, if you, I want to talk about this a little bit too. In Proverbs three one, it talks about that he even he even disciplines or corrects the son he delights in okay now i don't want to see any hands about who he delights in because i know it's not me and it's it, the only, god delights in us because we chose his son because we chose the sacrifice of what his son did and believe him and he delights in us but you know what the, the body of christ is so far from him right now and, and a lot of people out there and i know you guys are humble but a lot of people well, he delights in me um, yeah, no, yeah, no, not even, not even close. Come on, you know, and um, so, but the correction of the Lord, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And, and so if you want to turn to second Timothy three, verse 16 and 17, and I, I had it right and written down, but I'll just see if I got it. Here. But it, it's, 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 it's here, here's what's happened over the generations. Over the generations, um, the churches have been influenced by the world and also by, you know, liberal churches. But I, you know what, maybe like in the, in the, in the, in the late 1800s, I mean, I wouldn't know that. I'd ask Phil if he knew about it, but he's not here. And I'm just kidding. He's not that old. But back then. You know, it, discipline was just a normal thing. Hey, but if I went to my neighbor's house and I acted up unruly, he'd whip me too, right? Back then, back then, okay? But like, you know, when my dad was alive, he wouldn't let anybody do that, all right? I remember getting whippings in private school or whatever. But the fact is, um, you know, my dad would do that. And our dads would do that, okay? But now it's so woke that people are offended because the discipline of God, wait, What? That's not me. And I remember, you know, I, 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 I have seen, I, I know the Lord knows my heart. I know my own heart. And you know, when the Lord says something and you're like, yeah, oh, you know, him and Han, I'm going to, I'm going to do that, but I don't put my, I don't put my heart into it. And, um, the correction comes, it does, it does. And I, and I, so I know my own heart. I know my own heart. Even David said that his, uh, you know, his sin is ever before him, but, We'll get into that a little bit. So where are we at? Okay, so it says in uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by God and is profitable for doctrine and reproof for correction and instruction. You got the rest? I don't have it. Read it out, Read it out loud. Correction. That's it? That's all? What's the next verse? Yeah. Seven. Yeah, read 17. For that man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto you all good works. Okay, so that's it. His his correction, but his correction comes through the word of God. It, it comes through the word of God. And what the end result is only good for us. It's only good. And and I don't want to, I'm not like that one 
person that says, you know, gets slapped in the face and say, thank you. Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I don't really. I'd rather change my walk, you know, but I'm also glad for the discipline of God. I'm also glad for the correction of God because I need it. We, we all need it, you know, and, 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 and okay. So that one, I'm good with that. All right. So I think I, oh, 10 minutes. All right. I'm going to go fast now. But I, I want to change. A, I want to change a little tune here. I want to correction. We're done with that, okay? But I want to ask you why we do the things we do. Why? Why do? Why do we obey God? Why do we walk down His path? Why do we choose His wisdom in our life? And you know, um, I re I remember reading about Moses. Okay, Moses, and in the number numbers uh, two, three, twelve, three, it says that Moses was the humblest man alive. He was the meekest man alive. And he was in the presence of God. And he talked to God face to face. And a lot of people, they, 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 there's something between them and God. And that's because of the lack of that, that true humility. And, and believe me, it's a long process. And uh, I'm starting, and, but Moses was before God. And, and God raised him up. God raised him up. Um, And uh, let's see where I'm at. Okay, so he raised them up. He, you know, when when the decree went out from Pharaoh that all the, all the young born, I think it was the male under two, they wanted them to be thrown into the Nile River because they were afraid that these people, these the, the Israelites, the, the Jewish people, were going to become so strong that they would help fight them with their enemies. So they first said to the midwives, "Hey." You had you deliver a baby boy, throw him into the Nile. But the word of God says, because of their fear of the Lord, they didn't they didn't do it. So then the Pharaoh decided to overstep them. And he says, anybody in the population, you see a young boy, throw him into the river. And that's why Moses' mom was afraid. And she raised him up, but he was crying, he was getting a little loud. So she put him in a bull rush, right? She put him in a bull rush, a basket, put him in the Nile, and God's hand was upon it. And he went right to the princess of Egypt. All right. And see, and I, I'll just say the Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston has nothing on Moses, the real Moses. All right. Moses wasn't macho. He wasn't a sissy, but he was before the face of God. Okay. And so Moses was raised as a prince of Egypt. He was raised. He had all the wealth and the power and the prestige. He had the finest the finest uh, teachings, architectural, all the wisdom of the world at that time. He had it all. But at the same time, his mother was also there helping him. And I, and I, and I, it's in the Bible. Okay. It's just trying to, you can find it. But she had to tell him that, you know what? You're really not a prince. This is not you. You were born a Hebrew. You were born a Hebrew. Because when it came time, it says that rather, Rather than choosing the pleasures of sin for a season, he chose to, to, to identify himself with the people of God and the afflictions of the people of God. And so that's what God, he got him. God chose him and he raised him up. And then after 40 years in the wilderness and God raised him up and he, then all of a sudden Moses, Moses, um, God used him to make foolish the gods of Egypt, make foolish these people. They worship these things that God easily, you know what? It's foolish to God. He's, he's, he had Moses with the, with the 10 plagues and every one of those plagues made foolish all the things that these people believed in. And God can, God did it. He made them. And he just, and he just, how, and everything in our world was just, just kind of destroyed everything. It was like the air let out of the tire. And then um, later on, God used him to, to uh, bring his people out, right? He bring them out, and he, and so after Moses saw all the power, he saw all the power, and then he put one on dry ground, and it was dry ground. They weren't getting stuck on it. It was good enough to get through. And then God destroyed his enemies. And then after that, I think it was Mount Horeb. He went there, and God gave the Ten Commandments. But he talked with the Lord. He talked with the Lord, and um, so you know he he could have asked God, hey, help me be a better leader. He could have, he could have done it. He, he might have, but it's not in the scripture. Or God, why don't you shape your people up, shape them up, you know, get them or or get them to believe you more, something like that. 
Um, no, and I'm going to find out where it's at. And this is a rabbit trail. I know Pastor World is famous for these, but uh, it's a rabbit trail. But in Exodus 33, 18. Exodus 33, 18 through 23. See, Moses could have asked anything. What did he, and I'll just give you the one verse, 33, 18. He just asked them, and he said to the Lord, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Show, show me thy glory, or let me see you. Let me see who you are. Let me see that. Let me see that. And, you know, being out away from here, I came back because I saw Lord working here. I saw this. I saw the people getting delivered and freed and walking in something that they that you can't get. You can't get out there. You can be a lone ranger, but it's not going to work. You know, it's not going to work because there's no hedge over you. There's really not a hedge. And after a while, it just winds down. But I seen it. And, and you know, we, we, we want to see and we do see God working in each and every one of our lives. We see that. We see that. That otherwise, why well, believe what we believe, right? But it, it, it's truthful. And I, and I want I want to see God working in my life, but I got to get out of the way a lot. I really got to get out of the way. And um, so, so Moses said that. But I I'm gonna I got five minutes, so I'm just gonna cut it short. But you know, we asked the question. What we asked the question. Um, what is the meaning of life? And you'll have reporters go and they won't go to the normal person because we're all bogged down with the same stuff. I just want to work and make a paycheck. Well, they'll go to the rich, the famous, or they'll go to the to the uh, the gurus or whatever. Just people, you know, philosophers don't ask me, what is the fame? What is the meaning of life? And the fact is, they don't really get a good answer. OK, and then we go to even Christians. Well, what is the meaning of eternal life? What is what is eternal life? And we know it's being with the Lord. It's it's salvation forever. It's being with him forever. It's, uh, you know, and we're walking in eternal life right now. We are. From the time that his spirit came to us, we can enjoy. We're walking in eternal life. Not, you know, not the riches and all that stuff, but just, and I'll get to that real quick. But it is, it is. And I want to go to, since we're walking in eternal life, let's see where I'm at. Okay. Ooh, ooh. We all have our, our answers or our reasons. What, what is eternal life? But why don't we ask the Lord, what is eternal life? And, and this is, you know, we, we do all that we do because we want to we want to go further in this. But it, uh, let me see, John, you guys can turn to uh, John 17, 3. John 17, 3. Boy, that, that 45 minutes went so fast. But I'm sorry, guys. That's why I only be up here maybe once in a great while. I always stretch the time. But this might be it. Um, and, and the Lord said, as John recorded us, and it says this, and this is life eternal, or this is eternal life, that ye might know him, that, that ye might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou has seen, and, and the thing is, we 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 put the word of God in our heart. We humbly take it. He gives us the wisdom. We live it out, and and we walk that path. But in the end, it's just to know Him better. That's all. That's all. And and once we once we go through that plan, it's that step one, and His wisdom is our in our life. The Bible says that He gives wisdom to the humble, to the humble, and the wisdom is the opposite of foolishness. And then. That comes in our life, and then he reveals himself more. Because I didn't know that God was this merciful and forgiving until I got delivered of the stuff and I started walking in it, you know. And then you try to establish that grace in your house and stuff like that. But uh, I didn't know God was that gracious until he worked in me and ripped some of that stuff up and tried to show me exactly where I was going. But okay, so I still got, it says five minutes, so probably less. So I think that's it. It is to know him. We just want to know him better. And a lot of people take shortcuts. A lot of people, they, they take the shortcuts. And I've been in churches where, you know, I, have, I haven't seen the shortcuts. I'm, you know, slaying the spirit. Okay. I'm not going to talk about that, but you know. But, or, or, you know, you hear about holy laughter, holy laughter, and people are doing it. And that's because of the spirit of rejection. It's a shortcut. If you, would, if, you would, if you would follow after God and you would know him because you put his word in your heart, you wouldn't need this extra stuff, all right? And I've never, and, I, and I've actually seen somebody, um, and, and it's out there, guys, it's out there. And I thank God I was inoculated here because I'm like, that's demonic. 
and I've seen people shaking like they're having epileptic stuff. And it, I saw somebody doing it, and I'm like, that was an ex girlfriend. I'm like, man, she looked crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? No, that's demonic. That's demonic. Now I'm just gonna tell you this, and I'll and I'll close up real quick. Um, that now. You ever hear of the stuff about gold dust and stuff like that and the angels? Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I would have saw it the first time, I know that the second time I would have a big bag. And maybe like one of those power things. And if it was on the ground or on somebody's face, I would just. And I would have got a bag of it, covered it with the blood of Jesus and then see if it was worth anything. That's all. I would have I would have I would have stocked up. And that's 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 here or there. So. All right, guys. So there, let me just close up we got two minutes um so the the foolishness god has to discipline he has to it's it's not prophetic it's just it's a natural thing as a father if my kids that are 15 wanted to act like two-year-olds all the time and it and they'll, they'll, they'll if they hear this they're going to act like two years old for five minutes but it's it, it's something that he is going to correct. He is going to correct. And in the greater church, he's going to correct it. But I don't know. I don't blame the people all the time because some of these leaders, they know better. They know better. And in Jeremiah 5, 1 to 5, it says this, run ye to and fro, or, or run, ye, run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man, if there be any that executed judgment that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they had, surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than the rock. They have refused to return. Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgments of their gods. But I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord and in the judgments of their gods. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. And so I really blame it on the leaders more so than his just regular people. And uh, lastly, guys, um, in Psalm 94, 12, see, chasing, it comes through his word. It comes through the devil, you know. Sometimes the devil, God uses him like a monkey wrench and, I didn't know what a monkey wrench is, but I, I Googled it and it looks pretty cool. I don't know what I would use it for, but I'm going to get me one. I'm going to, they got some cool ones. So I'm going to get it. But the devil, he uses the devil as a monkey wrench. But then sometimes, you know what? The skinny bell comes off, right? Right. And, um, but David, David's awesome because you know, you know his life. God used this guy and he did all the stuff that he did, but he came back to the Lord. And it says, David says this in 94, 12. Blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth, O Lord, and teach them out of thy law. Blessed. And actually, blessed is the chastening of the Lord. All right? Blessed. Thank you, guys.